hydraulic factoring is more sustainable than other fossil fuels, it is, however, not in, in an abundance. It is a widespread belief that we hear about fossil fuels running out in the near future. My opponent's quote of the global set of crude oil and other hydraulic hydrocarbons is expected to be adequate to meet the world's demand for liquid fuels throughout um, 2050. That is only about 30 years from today on a global level of liquid fossil fuels. Time and resources will diminish quicker than many of us may think. Many of us will still be alive when this estimated amount will run out, so what will be our solution then? Also, we must take into consideration of how much the U.S. consumes annually. Another quote from the Energy Information Administration states that in 2018, the United States consumes an average of about 20.5 million barrels of petroleum per day, or a total of about 7.5 billion barrels of petroleum products annually. The United States is the world's most highest consumer of natural resources, and if demand rates continue to increase, the estimated time for future supply will shorten. This is also why gas prices here in Southern California have gotten well over $5 per gallon in more populated areas, such as Los Angeles. Demand has risen, so resources are becoming more scarce. In response to the decrease on reliance of foreign imports, the United States has already been consuming slightly less of previous years. Environmental impact assessment states, in 2018, United States net ports of petroleum from foreign countries averaged about 2.34 billion barrels per day, which equals to about 11% of United States petroleum consumption. So as just last year, our country is only consuming a small percentage of oil imports. This is an example of why exemptions need to be stricter since we are becoming more self-sufficient, particularly in California. Fracking is definitely not the worst air pollution that we have, but it is indeed a large amount of the entire piece. Brocken Elman explains in tight gas fields, researchers estimated the total annual mass flux volume of volatile organic compounds from the surveyed gas fields to be equivalent to the emissions of 100 million cars. That is a huge amount that is contributing to air pollution in our country. Also, another quote from Rockin Elman states, the benzene levels measured in this study also exceed health standards set by the Agency for Toxic Substances Disease Registry and the California's EPA to protect against harm to the developing fetus, immune system, and blood. On the topic of jobs, jobs will not be affected by this. In fact, it will create more jobs to do that we will need more employees and more health checks and put more time into adjusting these regulations that will benefit us in our lifetime. It will not affect current employees besides the change of regulation the regulations which happens on a yearly basis anyways. Um, in response to the babies being affected, I have a quote from Greenstone Michael that says nine years worth of birth records totally of 1.1 million births found that babies born within three um, kilometers, which is about two miles of a fracking site, are more likely to suffer from poor health. The largest impacts were to babies born within one kilometer, which is about half a mile from the site, with those babies being 25% more likely to be born with a low birth weight. Babies born to mothers living further than three kilometers didn't show any health impacts indicating that the health impacts were highly localized. Overall, we must enforce stricter regulations on fracking, devise more time to find a solution to our non-renewable sources, as well as minimizing current health issues and contaminations as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you.